They come as little pellets and when we first got started we bought them from pollinators. We weigh out these bees and we put them in trays and then we put those trays in an incubator and we have workers that come in and they make sure that we're at the right temperature morning and night and so that they're developing at the right um, time allotment. And then after incubation, this is where it gets kind of stressful for us. So it's important for us as pollinators to have the flowering date of when the farmers have planted until the first bloom. And we use those dates to know where our bees should be in the incubation process so that they're ready for when the flowers bloom. Because right as soon as the bees hatch out of the pellets that they're living in, then they go out in the field and then they can eat the nectar and the pollen that are in the fields. So it's important because we can't hold the bees too long, otherwise they starve in their little trays. But then we also have to get them out there as soon as that flower, the flowers bloom so that the farmers can get the best pollination possible. While Tyler and his team are working on incubation, we have a great team that we send out in the fields. There's a lot of scheduling that goes into lining up the fields with getting the shelters out. And it's an exciting time of the season. We have multiple trailers going out and they set up shelters. They put blocks in and there's people that go and spray the fields so that there's room around those shelters for the bees to come in and out of their nesting homes. So once all the shelters are out, we, the bees are starting to hatch out and we start putting bees out and it's warm and it's exciting and you lift off the tray and all these bees come flying out and the pollinating season has begun. Once we've put all the bees in the field, it's kind of a waiting game. We just go out and we monitor the bees. We try to track the data that we're trying to get out of that year. We, there's lots of sensors that go into the tents. We make sure that there isn't mice coming and eating through the bottom of our blocks or birds that are coming to damage them. And we're just trying to do our best customer service for the farmers and for the companies that we grow for. So during August, that's when the flowers have stopped flowering. Then we can go into the fields and we can start removing the blocks. They go in and we can start pulling out the tents and we can pull out the blocks that the bees have laid their eggs in. And they bring them into our shop, our bee shop here. And they start taking the blocks apart. And we created this incubating system and drying system so that when the blocks go into the system, the air is circulated and we have dehumidifiers that pull the moisture out of the blocks because once the, bee, the blocks have been dried out, they go through a puncher and it, it's got these forks on the puncher that will then punch the holes in these blocks that push the baby larva and their food pods out of the blocks so that we can store them for the winter. So once all of the bees are in their totes, we send the samples that we got from the blocks to the lab and the lab will give us all of the results. Once we get all this data, the bees are sitting in the incubators and our company is busily looking at all of the data and trying to organize it and trying to use that data to better pollinate for the next year. Once we've created all of the changes that we want throughout the winter. The season is right at the point that we're starting over so that we can start that life cycle with the bees again.